One of the classic tests for how skilled a chef is is a perfectly moist and evenly cooked filet mignon. Think you can do it? How about 50 of them every hour and having every one of them perfect? Using the old-fashioned way that you probably use, not even Marco Pierre White on methamphetamine could do that without screwing up at least 10% of them. But using this method, even a novice cook armed with only a timer can succeed perfectly. When you want filet mignon, never buy filet mignon. Buy tenderloin, a whole tenderloin or a piece of one, and do the butchering yourself. I end up cutting a lot of this in Russia because this kind of tenderloin is dirt cheap. It's about $5 a pound here. So trim away the tough part on the outside and then slice it. You just got to be careful not to remove too much of the meat. You just want to get rid of these bands of connective tissue because those will be very tough. And it's not particularly expensive cut here. So if I was a little bit of meat, I didn't even care. And after just a couple minutes, really, you've got this collection of uh, tough ligaments and, and connective tissue. You can throw this into a stock pot. You can throw it away. Or if you're making beef stock, this is always a good addition. You're going to have a little bit more in just a second here because we've got to trim this up. These end pieces, you know, if you can, you can fry them up and they can become a little snack for the chef if you're working in a restaurant. Otherwise, I, mean, I tend to just throw them in with a stock because it's, like I said, it's not especially expensive here. So now, we need to cut these. Cut them very straight. You want to make sure that you cut straight edges and you want to cut them thick. But if you've got an end piece like this, there's a trick you can do. You can fold it over and double it up to make it twice as, as wide. But I'm not even going to bother doing that. I'm just going to cut this about like this. Very thick. Very thick. Okay. Now what I got out of this is, is four pieces that are nice, thick, good sized pieces and some scraps that we'll use for stock. Now begin assembling the marinade ingredients. I've got the olive oil here. Uh, I've got four cloves of garlic. I'm just going to give them one cut. Uh, okay, a couple of cuts for the big one just to help them out because the uh, stick blender isn't always the best. It I have got three quarters of a teaspoon of finely ground black pepper, a whole teaspoon of thyme. Got ten milliliters of Worcestershire. That's about two teaspoons. An ounce of Scotch whiskey. This is this is the one that I'm using, William Lawson's. Uh, be sure to read the notes there on the side about that. In a judicious amount of liquid smoke if you're using that kind of whiskey. And finally, some MSG. Now this will get done. And I encourage you to dip your finger in and have a little taste of the marinade. You can see this is going to be something special already, even before you begin. Just coat the meat and let it soak as you would any other marinade, of course. Make sure it's coated on all sides and let it stand at room temperature. It's not going to spoil. It is plenty fine. Also notice I have not put any salt in this. Salt will be added just before it cooks. After the marinade time is up, take them out. Put them on a plate now. We're going to need to tie them up. Yeah, this is a, a very simple matter. You just get a length of twine and tie it around the middle. This just hold them together better when they're uh, when they're in the oven. That's it. That's all you need to do. Then just cut off the extra. Then we put the uh, steaks fillets on a wire rack like this, and we add coarse salt quite a bit to one side only. Really, a lot actually, <laughs> considering. But these are thick pieces of meat, and uh, this is the only salt they're getting. Remember, there was no salt in the in the marinade, um, and, and now they're ready for the oven. When the time is up, take them out of the oven, flip them over, and let them rest. I'm going to cut the string off of one of these just to show you what it looks like after it comes out of the oven the first time. I'm 
basically ruining this now just to show you, but this is after 14 minutes. It's too rare to eat. This is not good. But it's safe. There's no bacteria growing on it. Now, when we're ready for service, we can take the meat, stir it out, and put it onto a rack like this and put it into the oven for reheating and also for finishing cooking. And the amount of time we'll leave it in here will be related to how done we want the meat. Then, when it comes out of the oven, we can get rid of the string. how much you give it to you. Then you're going to give it a little touch of olive oil over the top, give it a nice glossy sheen. And when the customer gets it on their plate and they cut into it, this is what they're going to get. Also look for my cocktail book, Cocktails of the South Pacific and Beyond, Advanced Mixology, available through Amazon online.